Good morning, afternoon, evening to you all across the globe. Hope you're keeping well and are fully vaccinated. Who would have ever thought this would become a thing? Which vaccine did you get? What was the gap between your two jabs? Have you sanitized or washed your hands? Anyway, let's talk about the more interesting things that we enjoy. We all love a sh uh, share a love for travel. Mountains, lakes, ancient structures, unique cultures, wildlife, beaches, and so on. Today, as we head back to Central Asia, we visit another one of the Silk Road countries, which offers you pretty much all of the above, except beaches, as it's a landlocked country. Kyrgyzstan, set against the majestic backdrop of the imposing Tian Shan mountain range, this town of Central Asia has abundant natural beauty, nomadic traditions, and untamed wilderness. Step back in time at the historic Tashrabad Caravansarai, the beautiful Burana Tower, and ponder the purpose of the mysterious ancient statues called Balbals. Discover how yurts are constructed and how traditional handmade felt is made using time-honored traditions. And meet the men who bond with and train hunting eagles. As you can imagine, from being out in the open among scenic landscapes and historic monuments, and most importantly, being around people, travelers as well as locals, it is a completely new experience for all our amazing guides to share their stories via Zoom. They have taken to it quite well, though in their hearts, they long to be with people again, taking them on a real tour. I'm pleased to introduce our speaker, Lizaveta Kropacheva, uh, or you can call her Lisa, as she likes to be known. Um, she was born in Bishkek. The city was then called Frunze and has been working in tourism since 2004. She joined the industry after graduating from the Kyrgyz National State University. She developed a passion for travel and history from a very young age, as her father's assignments as a geologist took the family to various places within and outside the country. This provided Lizaveta the opportunity to get a deeper insight into the culture, traditions, and lifestyles of the people. And she took up tour leading in 2010 to share her stories and create insiders' experiences for other travelers. She's currently studying Turkish history and language. As always, please send any questions through to me via the chat box so I can take them up during the question answer round. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite Lisa to take over from here. Uh, Sonita, thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to to see you to, to see you here today and i'm so happy to introduce you uh, my motherland uh, kyrgyzstan thank you very much for your attention let's start Elisa, are you able to uh, move the slides? It, it, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so Kyrgyzstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan is a small country, is the most center of the Central Asia. Central Asia is a landlocked region, uh, and according to um, according to the Britannica, uh, Britannica, it uh, conclude it includes uh, several countries such as. Uh, such as Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. Uh, the name of the country means uh, land of the Kyrgyz people. Uh, this ending stan in the Persian language means country. So Kyrgyzstan is a country of the Kyrgyz people. Uh, look at this globe. Uh, this red spot, it's a, it's a Central Asia. So, um, so Kyrgyzstan is a uh, is a small mountains country uh, in the, in the central of Central Asia. Uh, so we have uh, we have a four uh, four neighbors. We have a borders with the four countries. It's a uh, Kazakhstan on the north, uh, for also formed Soviet Union Republic uh, on the east with the China, uh, <clears throat> on the south with the Tajikistan, also formed Soviet Union country, and on the west with uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, the size of the country is 198,000 uh, square kilometers. Uh, 
uh, more than 80% uh, covered, uh, more than 80% of the country covered with the mountains and mostly it's the Tianshan mountains. But also we have a small range uh, on the south of the country which connects uh, Tianshan and Pamir together. We call it Pamir Alai. Okay. Uh, population of the country is uh, 6.4 million people. 93% uh, 93% uh, of the people uh, they, uh, they practice Islam, so they're Sunni Muslim. Uh, 6% belongs to Russian Orthodox Church and 1% uh, to, uh, belongs to the others, like uh, witnesses of Jehovah, Baptists, and so on. So uh, state language is a Kyrgyz language, which belongs to the uh, Turkic family of languages. Uh, <clears throat> official language is a Russian language. So Kyrgyz alphabet, below, uh, Kyrgyz alphabet based on the Russian Cyrillic with the three additional letters. We are not only the country of the mountains, we're also country of the water. Uh, so we have a little bit less than 2,000 lakes. Lisa, you got muted. Um, yeah, you'll have to unmute. Thank you. <laughs> so the, big, the biggest lake is the Isiko Lake and <clears throat> the longest river is the Narin River, which goes through the whole country, and on the, uh, on the territory of Uzbekistan, it splits together with the Karadarya, and uh, they form Sirdarya River, which feeds Aral Sea. Uh, the average altitude of the country is 3,000 uh, 3, meters. Uh, there are several valleys in our country, and today uh, we are going to talk about two of them. It's uh, actually it's a Chui Valley, Chui Valley. Uh, we share that valley with the Kazakhstan and it's a Fergana valley. We share that valley with our neighbors, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, uh, our, our national flag. So it's a, it's a red clothes. Uh, for us, red color, uh, it's a color of the freedom. Uh, in, the center, in the center, you can see the sun, uh, which symbolizes prosperity. Uh, sun has a 40 races or 40 beans. Uh, which symbolize 40 tribes of Kyrgyz people. So 40 tribes which formed the Kyrgyz nation. And in the most center of the sun, uh, it's a uh, most center of the sun, it's a Tunduk. Uh, it's a top of the yurt. Mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, you know, it's only one window in the yurt. <laughs> so, well, why? Why we're talking about Kyrgyzstan? <laughs> because if you if you decide to come to our country, you have a chance to see the heritage of the Great Silk Road. Also, you can enjoy with the incredible landscapes. Uh, then, uh, authentic nomad culture. Uh, also, countless trekking and hiking routes. Uh, of course, the hospitality of the Kyrgyz people. And also, finally, um, experience. <clears throat> experience to live in a York, Kyrgyz traditional house. Uh, Silk Road. So Silk Road appeared, uh, Silk Road appeared in the second century, uh, in the second century before Christ and existed until the uh, middle of the 15th century. Uh, during that 17 uh, centuries, it was not only a road for the transporting goods, but also, uh, but also ideas, innovations, uh, religions, uh, philosophy. As, uh, as because the Kyrgyzstan uh, in, the, in the most center of the Central Asia, uh, through its territory went uh, three uh, went three line uh, th three routes of the Great Silk Road. So one is a northern one, so another one is a southern one, and uh, finally Firganian one. Uh, when the Silk Road stopped to exist in the middle of the 15th century, uh, the territory of Kyrgyzstan uh, stopped uh, stopped to play such a, such an important role, and uh, <clears throat> uh, on, you know it's just vanished from the political and geographical arena uh, uh, until the middle of the uh, until the middle of the 19th century. Uh, during that four centuries. Uh, uh, nothing significant was uh, nothing significant was built on the territory of Kyrgyzstan. Only endless uh, endless clashes between uh, between the tribes and constant uh, constant uh, uh, claims from uh, from China and from Kakand Khanate. Uh, 
in the middle of the 19th century, some heads, uh, some heads of the lo of the local tribes uh, decided that uh, for them it would be better to be under the protection of Russian Empire. And that uh, situation just uh, coincident with the interests of Russia in this region. So th uh, that is uh, that is why in the middle of the 19th century, Kyrgyzstan became the part of the Russian Empire. Uh, on these photos, uh, on these photos, you can see how Kyrgyz people uh, lived and um, uh, how they looked like uh, before before this territory was joined under the Russian Empire. So, uh, heritage of the Great Silk Road, of course, it's uh, bazaars and markets. Uh, okay. Uh, so of course uh, we uh, in our country of course we have a modern uh, supermarket but anyway our people uh, they prefer to go to the markets because uh, when you are there you have a chance to bargain you know to meet your friends or just to listen uh, the uh, last uh, gossips or news <laughs> uh, also we have a livestock uh, but uh, they uh, they open on oh, usually they work on sundays so every city, every town, in every town, in every village, you can find a, you can find a bazaars. Uh, the history of the country, as you know, um, uh, presented in its ar uh, architecture. So our ar architecture is pre um, <clears throat> is presented the periods uh, up to 15th century, and next one after uh, after the 19th century, uh, after after the middle of the 19th century. Uh, I would like to note uh, uh, that the history of the Kyrgyz people and the history of the Kyrgyz land, you know, have, has been inter interwined uh, at the end of the 14th century. Uh, be before before that, uh, on the territory of Kyrgyzstan, there were, uh, there were several um, uh, several tribes, several nations who lived here. So the first inhabitants of this place, it's the Andronov tribes. It's the third, first millennium before Christ. Uh, next period, it's the uh, Saka period. It's the eighth, second century before Christ. Uh, then uh, Hunosunian time. Uh, it's the second century before Christ, fifth century and the Domini. Uh, after them, uh, next period, it's uh, Turkic Khanate from sixth to 13th century. Uh, then Kyrgyzstan was a part of the great uh, Genghis Khan empire. Uh, it's a 13th century and 14th century. And finally, at the end of the 14th century, Kyrgyz tribes, they came from the territory of Altai uh, to the territory of Kyrgyzstan. Uh, so architectural monuments uh, here present. So here presented. In, so in the picture of Caravan uh, Sarai Tashrabat, uh, it's a uh, 12th century. Uh, the uh, Uzgian uh, Uzge Mausoleum, uh, it's 11th and 12th century. Remains of Koshoi Korgon, it's a 10th century. Uh, uh, then uh, Russian, uh, uh, Russian style houses, you, uh, you can see many of them are in a caracol. Uh, the Dungan Mosque, uh, beginning of the 20th century, and uh, Soviet Soviet architecture, uh, uh, Soviet architectural style. It's a <clears throat> theater of opera and ballet in the center of a Bishkek, middle of the previous century. But for us, as a phenomenon, uh, Yort, uh, Yort is a citadel of our culture. Uh, on, uh, on, on this picture, you can see how it looks like nowadays, and on the bottom picture, how it looks like in the 19th century. So each, each country is beautiful on its own way. Uh, but, in our, uh, but in our country, you can see the landscapes of, 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 a different, of a different country. Right now, you can compare our country with other countries. Uh, so in Kyrgyzstan, you can find a variety of landscapes just moving from one place to another. Uh, also in our country, we still uh, still uh, uh, still keep and enhance the traditions of our nomad culture. 
uh, our people uh, we still practice eagle hunting eagle hunting uh, then uh, making carpets from the felt uh, playing on the national instruments and organizing uh, the <clears throat> no, organizing the horse games I, I would like to present some of them so Kegboro, uh, it's a Kyrgyz traditional football uh, just uh, uh, just on the horses and instead of the balls they used the headless uh, headless body of goat or sheep uh, <clears throat> so the rule of the game you need to upset uh, you need to uh, uh, you need to upset the body of the goat and put it and put it into the gate of your uh, of your enemy as uh, a maximum number of times no, actually not enemy your opponents <laughs> now the winners the winners uh, they they eat that they eat that body, uh, you know, as a barbecue. It's their price. So in a, another game, it's a tea in May. It's a picking up money, um, pick, uh, picking up um, coins uh, from the ground on the on the full gallop. So and another one is a kiss kumai. If you translate it uh, from Kyrgyz, it means uh, kiss a girl. So usually it was a competition between uh, between a groom and bride, and uh, during that competition, so the guy should catch the girl and kiss her. If he was unlucky, you know she had uh, she had a chance just to refuse him. Another <clears throat> another interesting and very ancient tradition is hunting with the eagles. Uh, so. Um, uh, uh, hunters uh, hunters acquire eagles in uh, two ways. So they took uh, they take them from the nest, or they catch them um, they catch the young chicks with a net. Uh, usually they use them for the hunting during ten years, and then they release them. So they had uh, so that they had a chance <coughs> uh, to meet to meet their couple and give a birth to chicks. Uh, for hunters, for hunters uh, eagles. For hunters, eagles, it's a member of the of the family. And traveling around uh, Kyrgyzstan, you have a chance to meet uh, to meet the uh, hunters. We call them birpuchi, and to listen uh, listen the interesting stories about the life of the bird, how they train them, and also to see the eagle hunting show. Shirdak is a Kyrgyz. <clears throat> Is a Kyrgyz uh, is a Kyrgyz national carpet. Uh, actually, Kyrgyz people they have uh, they, they have different kind of carpets, but shirdak is the main of it. Um, the process of the uh, the process of manufacturing of that uh, carpet goes from the ancient times, and since that uh, since that times it was hardly changed uh, from uh, from the beginning until the end. It's a handmade it's a handmade work. Uh, so uh, people, uh, people in the villages, they still continue that tradition, and until the middle of the 20th century, such kind of carpets as, as a shirdak was in every dowry of the girl. Uh, what culture is is without folklore? So we have uh, uh, Kyr Kyrgyzstan is very famous with its music and with its uh, national instruments. So we have uh, a <coughs> uh, komus. It's our guitar. So uh, then Kulkuyak, it's our violin. And Timirkomus, it's a mouse. Uh, Timirkomus is a, a mouse iron harp. Uh, being our guest, you have a chance to uh, to listen to the implementation of the uh, of the of the national uh, melodies um, uh, from the uh, from the professional musicians. So Manas is a Kyrgyz, uh, Kyrgyz national hero. He's an epic hero. Uh, epic, uh, epic, uh, epic or saga, uh, epic or saga about Manas. It's the longest, uh, longest saga in the world. It includes more than half of the million uh, lines. And people who implement that saga, uh, we call them Manas Chi. Uh, they do that by the memory, so they know they know it uh, by heart. Until the middle of the 19th century, uh, uh, 
story about Manas existed only orally. Uh, but then, in the middle of the nineteenth, uh, in the middle of the nineteenth century, um, uh, Russian ethnographers uh, they started to collect uh, a different stories about Manas from the local nomads, and finally we got a big, big book uh, about Manas. So Manas, it's a, it's, a, it's an encyclopedia of the Kyrgyz life. Uh, from that book, uh, we di <clears throat> we discovered the uh, traditions and uh, historical events which happened in past. Uh, on, also on this picture, you can see Sayagbai Karalayev. Uh, one of, he was one of the most famous Manaschi, and his version of Manas is the longest one. Okay, here we go to the map, and right now I would like to tell you about uh, five, five highlights. Uh, the first one is located in the Chui Valley, it's a Bishkek, our capital. Uh, then Burana uh, Tower, uh, 75 kilometers from Bishkek. Uh, then Tashrabat uh, quite, uh, is located quite close to the Chinese border, just 100 kilometers. Uh, so in, uh, another one, it's Osh, our southern capital, uh, which is located in the Fergana Valley and Uzgen. So Bishkek is the capital of Kyrgyzstan with a population of 1 million people. Uh, before we've got our independence, before 1991, it had the name Frunze, General Frunze. Uh, he was the head. Uh, he was the head of the Soviet uh, uh, Soviet Red Army and a Marine Force uh, during the Stalin's time. So he was uh, he was born and uh, spent his childhood in our in our city. So Bishkek, if you translate the name of the uh, of, of the city, it means in Kyrgyz it means it's a um, uh, wooden stick for the steering uh, mare's milk. Actually, uh, mare's milk it's a national uh, drink of nomads. Uh, from every corner of a Bishkek, you can see beautiful Tianshan Mountains because it stays near to the foot of Tianshan. So the main highlights of Bishkek. Uh, on this picture, on this picture, you can see uh, you, you can see the uh, National Museum. Uh, during Soviet times, it was a museum of Lenin. Uh, shape of the building reminds uh, mausoleum in Moscow. But right now, it's a national museum. In the center, you can see the statue of Manas. Uh, our also uh, national hero on his magical horse Akula. But in the Soviet times, it was a, on this place uh, there was a Lenin. But we replaced him to the back side of the building, so you still have a chance to take a photo near to him. <clears throat> One of the most beautiful uh, square of a Bishkek, it's a Philharmonic square. So also in the center, you can see the statue of Manas uh, killing the snake. And <clears throat> Uh, surrounded with the buildings which uh, which were built uh, during Soviet times. So and Victory Square devoted to uh, devoted to the heroes uh, who never returned from for after the World War II. Osh, our southern capital and uh, the most ancient city in Kyrgyzstan. The age of that is uh, three thousand years. Uh, in the most uh, in the most center of Osh, uh, uh, you can uh, you can see. You can see uh, Sulimanto Mountain. Uh, from the ancient times, uh, this um, <coughs> this place uh, played uh, played played a role as a, a place of worship. <coughs> on, the, on the top of that, you can find the small mosque of Babur, uh, who who built that here in the 15th century. Uh, actually, Babur, he was a grand grandson of Tamerlan, and he was also he was the founder of the Great Mughal Empire in India. Uh, he was born in the Fergana Valley, and he loved Osh so much. Uh, since uh, since two thousand since two thousand nineteen, uh, <clears throat> uh, this place uh, this place is a UNESCO site. So. Uh, one one of the main highlight one of the main highlight in Osh it's Osh Bazaar, uh, where you can buy everything started from the fruits and vegetables and finish uh, finish with the garments. Um, in a section in a section of the blacksmiths you can see with your own eyes how they do the, how they make the knives. So thousand year, years has passed, but you know a market a bazaar still live its own life. Uh, uh, it's very noisy. Yeah. Uzgen. Uzgen, uh, 
also ancient city, but uh, age of that little bit less than Osh, it's only 2000 years. And in the 12th century, it was the capital of the great Karahanid empire. Uh, since that time, uh, uh, only several buildings survive uh, since that time. And uh, right now we have the mausoleums. Uh, it's 11, 11th and 12th centuries. And also the tower, Minaret, uh, twelfth or belongs to twelfth century. So uh, I would like little. Uh, I would like to tell a little bit about the Karahanid Empire. <clears throat> Actually, it was a, in a ten, uh, from tenth to to the end of the twelfth century. It was a big empire which occupies the territory of Kyrgyzstan, uh, South Kazakhstan, and <clears throat> uh, territory of Uzbekistan. Uh, so. Uh, this uh, Karahanid, uh, Karah Karahanids, they brought Islam to the territory of Kyrgyzstan. So, and another trace of Karahanids uh, you can find <coughs> in ancient city Balasagun, uh, which is uh, 75 kilometers from Bishkek. Right now, this place has a name, uh, Burana Historical Complex. Mm, so, since the time of Karahanid, it was a capital of Karahanids uh, in the 10th century. So since that time, uh, we have we have this beautiful tower. Initially, it was uh, 50 meters. Uh, right now, only 24.6 meters. Uh, it was used as a minaret, and uh, also it was used as a watchtower. On the territory of the historical complex Burana, uh, right now we have uh, we have the tower. Actually, Burana Tower is the oldest tower on the territory of Central Asia, and three basements of the mausoleums. Okay, also, uh, also on the territory of that historical complex, we have a bal balls or stone men. Uh, such kind of stone men, ancient Turk tribes who lived on the territory uh, of Kyrgyzstan from 6th to 9th century, uh, they, put on the graves, uh, they put on the graves of the warriors, uh, the most famous warriors actually. And also um, around that uh, stone men, they put, uh, they put uh, stones. And the number of the stones equals the number of the enemies which were killed during the life of that warrior. All that collection of the Balbals were, uh, were found in different parts of our country and brought to one place, to uh, Burana Historical Complex. Karavansarai Tashrabad is a mysterious place. Uh, it was built in the 12th century and already stopped to, uh, already stopped to functioning in the 14th century. Uh, some scientists suppose that initially it was built uh, by the Nestorian Christian people and used uh, used as a church of uh, as a church. Uh, but some uh, some uh, some uh, historians they suppose that it was built as a caravansaray. Uh, located on the altitude 3,500 meters. Uh, just very close to the Chinese border, just 100 kilometers uh, in the Karakuyun Valley. Uh, uh, because uh, be, uh, since Kyrgyzstan uh, stu uh, stay on <clears throat> stood on the most central of Central Asia, and uh, because uh, because uh, three uh, branches of the Silk Road went uh, through <clears throat> through that territory, uh, we had a lot of caravans arise in Kyrgyzstan. But unfortunately, until nowadays, only uh, Tashrabad survived. Because maybe because it was built from the stones. Issyko Lake, the Pearl of Tanshan. Uh, the name of the lake uh, in uh, the, the name of the lake in Kyrgyz uh, means warm lake because during winter it never covers with the snow. Uh, the size of the lake uh, from the west to the east <coughs> is 182 kilometers, and from north uh, from north to the south 58 kilometers. Maximum depth uh, 702 meters. It's around it's surrounded by <coughs> by the Tianshan Mountains. You can see on that picture made from the space. Uh, and also the glaciers, you also can see the glaciers on that. Uh, <clears throat> the size of the glaciers is a, a 40, 48 square kilometers. Uh, it started to form as a lake 15 million years ago and became salty 2000 years ago. Uh, 88 rivers flow into the lake and no one flow out. Uh, it's it's a very beautiful picture of Tianshan Mountain. And on this picture, you can see why this mountain has a name Tianshan. Uh, 
you know, it looks like it just hand on the air. Tianshan, uh, if you translate it from uh, Chinese language, means celestial or heaven mountains. It goes through, uh, through the territory of five countries. Uh, Xinjiang district of China, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. But the biggest part of Tianshan on the territory of Kyrgyzstan, uh, 1,000 kilometers. So uh, moving towards uh, moving towards to the east uh, in the place in the place named Chilponada. It's the northern shore of the East Sikuli. So uh, you have a chance uh, you have a chance to visit uh, the Museum of the Petroglyphs. It's a museum under the open sky, occupies territory 42 hectares. So uh, people uh, from the ancient uh, from the ancient times they choose this place as a place of worship. Uh, probably they uh, prayed here uh, to their different gods and mostly to the god uh, to the god of sun. Uh, on the uh, on the most uh, on the most uh, the size of the stones is completely different. It started from the uh, thirty centimeters to three meters, and most of them uh, depicts uh, depicts the animals or hunting scenes. Uh, moving towards to the east, finally we reach Karakol town. Uh, it, uh, this it is a founded. Yeah, it was founded as a Russian military fortress, a fortress in the middle of the 19th century. And uh, during Soviet times, it had uh, another name. It, it was Prezhvalsk. Uh, such kind of houses you can find on every corner of Karakol. Also around Isiku Lake, uh, there are a lot of beautiful gorges. Uh, but one of the most beautiful one, from my point of view, uh, it's a Chetiogus. It means uh, the Gorge of the Seven Oxen. Uh, Soviet, uh, so Soviet astronauts, after, after their flights in the space, they came to this place for the rest. Uh, uh, very close to Karakol, uh, just 10 kilometers out of Karakol, there is a complex museum of Nikolai Prozhevalsky. Uh, he was a very famous uh, traveler of the 19th century. Also, he was a member of the Russian geographical community. So uh, his dream, uh, he, he was the first man uh, who composed the uh, topographical map of Central Asia? Before that, it, it just didn't exist. And his dream was his dream was to reach a, a gate of Ulhasa, the capital of Tibet. And finally, uh, bef before his uh, fifth uh, uh, travel, you know, uh, he found he found the shortest way how to reach Ulhasa. So started from Karakol, uh, then through the Tianshan Mountains, and then through the Taklamakan Desert. And further, but uh, you know that's never that's never happened. Uh, unfortunately, he was uh, he was infected with a typhoid and died. According to his will, he was he was buried uh, near to his beloved Isaku Lake. So, on the territory of that historical complex, so we have we have the museum with his personal stuff. It was a present from his relatives. Uh, then we have a a monument devoted to him, and just a few meters from the monument, uh, the grave, uh, the grave of Prezhevalsky. So uh, another uh, in, another highlight, another highlight of the Karakol is a uh, <clears throat> Church of the Holy Trinity, which was built at the end of the 19th century. So next one, uh, it's a uh, uh, Dungan uh, Dungan Mosque. So how Dungan people uh, appeared on the territory of Kazakhstan? Um, in 1877, uh, after the revolt uh, on the territory of Xinjiang district of China, 100,000 uh, Dungan people, they overcame the <coughs> uh, Turugar Pass and appeared on the territory of uh, Kyrgyzstan. Here they organized a small community and as because they practiced Islam, uh, uh, they wanted to build. They wanted to build a mosque, and for that purpose, so they invited the Chinese architect uh, and uh, twenty artisans. So, and during three years, uh, started in 1907 until 1910, uh, they built that uh, beautiful mosque in a in a form of pagoda. Uh, unfortunately, after the returning back to China, this architect and he and uh, the, his artisans they were sentenced to death. Uh, but but we still have this beautiful uh, this beautiful mosque. It's a, it's a memory about them. Okay, two more uh, two more highlights. It's a Chongqing, and uh, 
our beautiful Sonko Lake. Uh, Sonko Lake is the second uh, is the second largest lake uh, of Kyrgyzstan, located on the altitude 3,016 meters um, above sea level. Uh, this place was <clears throat> it's a shepherd place, and since ancient times, uh, uh, shepherds they br uh, they bring their livestock uh, for the summertime um, uh, to here. So, but but because because it's a high mountain lake, you know, it's possible to reach it. Um, only during uh, three three months uh, three months during the summertime it's June July and August uh, for the rest time of the year it's uh, it's completely not possible uh, it's a uh, uh, in this place you can feel uh, you, you can see and you can feel the real life of nomads people you have a chance to meet a, a local shepherds you have a chance to communicate with them and also uh, you have an opportunity to live in a yurt uh, on the way to on the way to Sonkul, you can see uh, such kind you can see such kind of hills. Uh, it's a burial uh, it's a burial mound belongs to a Scythian period. Uh, I just I just wanted to remind you that it's a uh, eight second century before Christ. So and <clears throat> it's a graves of the uh, Scyth uh, Scythian uh, kings. So the process of the funeral of the uh, Scythian kings was a uh, was a quite interesting. Uh, when the kings died. Uh, he, uh, they cut out his body, take out all the internal organs, uh, stuffed it with uh, uh, herbs, and then uh, so just mummified the body, and then move the body from uh, one place to another during 40, uh, 40 days that people had a chance to say goodbye to the king. Uh, so uh, that golden uh, that golden man, uh, he belongs to the uh, Scythian period, and his body uh, his body was found not far from the. Almaty uh, for, formed capital of Kazakhstan uh, in the 60s of the previous century. Uh, Why well, he has the name of, of a gold man? Because uh, he, uh, his garments decorated with 2,000 pieces of gold. So uh, Scythian, peer, uh, Sc uh, Scythian uh, tribes, they were very good in making uh, such a decorations in a, for, in, a, <clears throat> in a zoomorphic style. And also they made an Akinox Uh, actually, it's a knife or uh, or a small a sword, and uh, this golden man he became a symbol of Kazakhstan. Uh, so uh, once again, um, Sonkul. That's how the yurt looked like on a Sonkul in nowadays, the place where you can uh, actually live uh, for several days. Installation installation of the yurt. Um, so for people who knows uh, for people who knows how to do that, it takes uh, less than uh, two a uh, couple of hours. Initially, they install the walls of the yurt. They call, they call it terege. Then the door uh, bosoko. Uh, then they ho they hold the tunduk and fix uh, the hooks. So after that, uh, they covered that uh, <coughs> construction uh, wooden construction with the felt. So it's a, it's a very quickly and it's a very easy. And if you decide if you decide to visit our country, so you may take uh, you may take part in this process. Uh, Chankimin Valley, it's the biggest high mountain valley in our country. Uh, uh, there you can enjoy uh, with the, with the beauty of the nature or just uh, do a horse riding and just relax. Uh, located uh, located quite close to Bishkek, just uh, 90 kilometers. So you need a couple of hours to reach this place. So in uh, right now, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the film uh, about Kyrgyzstan.
So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with me today and welcome to Kyrgyzstan. We will be very happy to see you here. Lisa, thanks for a really interesting journey around Kyrgyzstan. My mind is still lost in Kyrgyzstan, so it's going to be hard for me to <laughs> up what I need to know. But uh, yeah, so time for me to just give a little information on our tours. Let's bring this up. Nothing as interesting, really. I mean, no fancy pictures, <laughs> nothing much, but let's get started. So here's our first trip, a standalone trip of Kyrgyzstan, which uh, covers all these beautiful places that uh, Lisa mentioned um, in her presentation. It is a 12-day trip. We run only one group trip uh, during springtime, which is one of the best times to visit the country, but you can do it as a private trip at any time. And it can be easily combined with any other stan. So depending on the amount of time you have, you may want to combine two or three countries and uh, this could be a trip. So uh, going on to the next one, uh, one of our most popular trips is Five Stan Odyssey uh, Tour. It is a 30 day trip, but as the name uh, suggests, it covers all the five stans, the highlights of the five stans. We do run two trips during spring as well as in autumn. In fact, next year, due to the bookings, we are running two trips over the autumn period, the late summer autumn period. And uh, of course, you can do it at any time during the good season as a private trip, because the season is very short in the country. The best times would be around from mid-April to about October maximum. We have journey through the four stands, which uh, is a trip which excludes Uzbekistan but covers all the other four stands. And here again, we run two trips in spring as well as in autumn. This is mainly for those who have already been to Uzbekistan and then want to um, cover the highlights of the other four stands. Silk Road through the stands. So, as the name suggests, this was um, this is a trip which just takes you on the um, the main ancient Silk Road. Starts in Kyrgyzstan, goes via Uzbekistan, and ends in Turkmenistan. This trip can also be combined with our other Silk Road trips. So if you want to do the China segment of the Silk Road and then go on to this, you would need to do it before this trip because then you go overland from Kashgar into Kyrgyzstan. And similarly, if you want to combine it with Silk Road through Persia, which uh, takes you around Iran, that would be done at the end of the trip where you go on overland from Turkmenistan into Mashhad to start the trip. Um, Kyrgyzstan is five hours ahead of uh, UK and there are no direct flights, so you can either fly via Turkey or the Middle East. For most nationalities, no visa is required for a stay of up to 60 days. Uh, SOM is their currency and being largely a cash economy, um, cash is uh, uh, used everywhere and it can be exchanged easily in all places. There are very few ATMs only in Bishkek, Osh and uh, Karakol and very few establishments except credit cards. And best time to travel, as I mentioned, was uh, between April to June or September, October. Best to avoid the coldest and the hottest ones. So let's have the questions now. Uh, Lisa, can I request you to join us again, please, for the questions? Um, right, so let's start uh, with the, what is the food like? I mean, uh, you'll have to unmute yourself, please. Mm -hmm. What is the food like? Uh, is there much variety for vegetarians or is it more meat heavy? Uh, yes, in our country, uh, we have a big variety of, of food. So, and also for the vegetarians. You know, a great, a great influence uh, of uh, China is in, uh, in Russia, you know, <laughs> big variety of food. And uh, moreover, uh, during Soviet times, uh, we have a, uh, in our country, we had uh, more than 80 different uh, ethnic groups. Uh, right now, something about 50 different ethnic groups. And all, uh, all that, you know, ethnic groups, uh, they brought something to our kitchen. So big variety. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it must be, and, and, and such a, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you can have fusion foods also, I guess, like if you, do you get that in uh, uh, Bishkek, restaurants in Bishkek, where it is kind of a mix of food from different regions? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true, so in, in our restaurants, uh, I mean, you, you can order, uh, you know, uh, a big variety of food. <laughs> You know, also we have a also we have a Korean uh, Korean restaurants, uh, Chinese restaurants here. 
uh, European restaurants here. So pretty big variety of food. Okay, thank you. Um, you did mention a church there. Uh, could you give us the full name, please? You showed one of the churches in the pictures. Uh, sure, church, it's a Holy Trinity Church. Holy Trinity. Yes, uh, end of the 19th century, uh, one of the highlights of Caracol. Right, okay. So thank you so much. And uh, there's one uh, TTO related question. So I'll just take that. Um, we have someone ask if we are running any trips in 2021. Well, yes, the thing is uh, Kyrgyzstan is open to travelers with a PCR test. And um, you know, if you are okay to quarantine on the return because they are on the amber list as of now, uh, then you know it can be discussed further. It's definitely possible, but uh, of course you need to take these things into account. So if you're unable to isolate on your return, uh, it may not be a possibility and it might be better to do it next year. Though the country is open and they are accepting uh, visitors. So let's go on to the next question. That again is uh, TTU related that yes, we do talk about these trips because when we have these presentations, we do like to uh, talk about what we have uh, to offer for those regions, if not for now, for later. But yes, these are all things to bear in mind currently about the PCR tests and the possible additional costs and quarantines. And uh, yeah, so, but it's not, necessary to take any of them now and these can be taken in 2022 or whenever things do get better. Um, what are the roads in the country like given that a lot of travel is just overland? Hello. Hello. Uh, Sanita, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Could, could you repeat your last question? I, I just missed it back. Sure thing. Uh, what are the roads in the country like? Uh, roads, uh, Overland, so, yeah. um, uh, most of the roads which connect uh, big cities or big towns uh, together, they are, you know, they are very good. Uh, but for example, roads which leads to Sonku Lake or to other gorges, it's just a, it's just a ground road. Right, okay. So there, there the distances can be longer. Uh, I mean, it can take, the driving times can be longer. Yes, you're right, you're right. It takes longer time. Thank you. Um, any idea when Kyrgyzstan might open up to fully vaccinated travelers? Like neighboring Tajikistan is accepting fully vaccinated travelers without PCR tests. So do you have any kind of information just yet as to when Kyrgyzstan might do that? Mm. So um, as, far, as far as I know, something about 20,000 uh, 20, people in Kyrgyzstan, they were uh, vaccinated. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, just what? Uh, just uh, we have uh, two kinds of vaccine. Uh, it's a, it's a Russian one, Sputnik, and a Chinese one, uh, Sinopharm. Uh, so, uh, if you want, if you wanted to come to Kyrgyzstan, it's necessary to have a PCR uh, PCR test. Uh, just uh, you, you could do that uh, seventy two hours before arrival to Kyrgyzstan. Uh, so that's actually all the rules. Okay. Uh, come in, uh, to come to our country. And I think for them also, I mean, for us to um, mm -hmm. travel, even after being vaccinated, as per the regulations of our country, it might just take time because I think your vaccination program also needs to come up to the mark maybe. So it might take time for Kyrgyzstan to do away with PCR tests for people who are already vaccinated coming to the country. Yeah. yeah. Um, do many people uh, in the local areas understand English? Uh, you know, uh, uh, mostly young people, uh, young people in the big cities, yes. Uh, uh, but also, you know, um, uh, if you want to, uh, if you stay, you know, if, if you do a home stay, you know, in the villages and uh, that people, they were specially trained, uh, yes, uh, uh, somebody from the family, they understand English, uh, but the rest, not. As I, uh, no. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, Kyrgyz is a national, uh, Russian is a... Uh, <clears throat> is official language so but young people in in, in the big cities and towns yes so the, yeah okay and what is so, that but you know the best language to communicate it's the language of the events <laughs> <laughs> but actually in most of the central asian countries they say language of international communication and russian and it's understandable because like you know largely everyone speaks russian there for them international communication is really you know russian comes first before english maybe so <laughs> 
uh, but fair enough, like, you know, considering the history and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to take time till everybody gets well versed. But the younger people definitely are speaking more English. Um, what is the accommodation like, you know, do you have these uh, boutique style accommodations in bigger cities or are they? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we have, we have uh, may, maybe not a lot, but some of, some of them in the Bishkek and in other places. Yes, we have. Also, homestays are quite popular here. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, uh, so uh, also ho a homestay is a very popular here. Uh, some years ago, uh, the Helvitas, so they, made a, uh, they made a program. Uh, so <clears throat> they went to the rural areas and they, uh, they taught uh, local uh, local people how to how to work with the tourists how to accept them in their houses uh, so uh, actually in every village uh, in every village uh, you, you can find a homestay okay that's great so yeah that gives a much more authentic experience um, for anybody wanting to uh, yes yes yes, yes. Uh, also you have a chance to uh, communicate with the locals uh, to, to understand how our people live uh, yeah it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good experience uh, to feel our hospitality uh, and try our local kitchen. <laughs> Absolutely. It's something which goes beyond the itineraries. I mean, itinerary just talks about your day-to-day -day things and what you see and where you travel and everything. But this gives you more of an experience. Yes, right. Uh, the authentic experience. But for anybody looking at a, a private or a tailor-made trip, what is the best time for eagle hunting? Because I'm sure anybody visiting that's something of a highlight of your country and they would like to add. So, uh, so eagle hunting, uh, eagle hunting, uh, you know, it's a better, a better place to see the eagle hunting. It's uh, Bakambayeva village because most, uh, most of the mm, hunters, uh, Berkuchi, they live in that area. So actually traveling around Itsuku Lake, uh, 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 most south shore, it's possible to see the um, possible to see the uh, eagle hunting and communicate with the uh, hunters. And what is the best time? Uh, best, uh, best time actually uh, from uh, started from April until the end of October. Okay, exactly. Uh, maybe, maybe you know uh, in June in June and July it's uh, it actually you know it's a uh, quite uh, quite hot. But uh, to tell the truth, from April until the end of October. Great, yeah. And that is typically the season, really. So there's another question here, which is more TTU related. If our trips include visit to see eagles and uh, felt carpet factory, yes, I mean, you do get to see felt making. You yes. also get to experience yurt making and then yes. you get to see eagle hunting. So yes, yes. everything, everything, <laughs> everything what you wish. Absolutely. It's, it's such a highlight in Kyrgyzstan. So, you know, it, it's a must on any itinerary. Uh, let's look at other questions. Uh, again, a TTO question. Do we have a combined Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan tour and can one travel overland? Yes, definitely. And we do have yes. a combined Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan tour. Our Tajikistan Odyssey tour um, starts in Tajikistan and ends in Kyrgyzstan. So you arrive into Dushanbe and you leave from Bishkek. So yes, it does cover. And um, how safe is the country for solo travelers? Say someone. Uh, I can. Uh, email. Uh, uh, I can say that it's. A, uh, we are safe. I mean, it's a safe in our country. It, it's a safe enough in our country. Uh, can 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 you hear me? Yeah. 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 We can. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in 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 our, in, our, in our safe. Great. And what is the public transport system like? Uh, so, uh, uh, public transport is uh, presented by the uh, trolley, uh, I mean, in, in the cities, uh, it's a trolley buses and buses, also much uh, taxi and taxi. And also we have a buses uh, between, uh, between the, you know, villages and uh, cities. Okay, so I mean, if a foreigner wants to get that experience and travel from one city to the other, uh, or they can actually on local transport? Yeah, actually it's possible, it's possible. Um, but most of the people they prefer to take a taxi from one place to another, for example, from this place to Karakul. Oh. It, it's, it's quite easy to do that, uh, but it will take them a time and, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's possible. 
Right. That would be truly an adventure because, of course, it wouldn't be systematic. <laughs> yeah, like you said. Yeah, just, you know, probably maybe for them it, 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 it might be a difficult to communicate with the local. Uh, your voice is breaking you know, up. Uh, Lisa, you might have to move a bit to the center as you did before. Your voice is breaking up. Oh, okay. Uh, so, but uh, for the, uh, you know, for the independent travelers, it, it might be quite difficult, you know, to communicate with the local drivers. I mean, <laughs> the taxi drivers, uh, ask them about the price and so on and so on. It's possible. Yes. Everything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> True. Maybe we could look at that option too, you know, it's <laughs> have a guide leading, but giving that kind of an experience, <laughs> transport. Um, how did the country manage the COVID situation? So uh, the COVID situation, uh, as I mentioned before, something about um, 20, uh, 20, 20, 21,000 people, uh, they were injured with the, uh, they, they were vaccinated. They were vaccinated. Uh, so two, two kinds of va vaccine uh, we have, it's a Russian one, Sputnik, and a Chinese one, yeah. Uh, uh, so we are, we are in process. Um, uh, to tell the truth, COVID is still with us, and you know it, it will be with us, uh, you know, for a, for a long time. But to, so we we are, we are fighting against that. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I guess with as with every country, uh, it'll take time to be totally eradicated, yes. or like you know, for everyone to develop the herd immunity to kind of, uh, you know, be able to overcome that. And we are depending on other things like, you know, even medicines and all coming up. So, so I think it's a matter of time, but it'll change. Yes, it, it, yes it's just a question of time. Right, yeah. And, um, okay, just uh, more questions. So I'll just take that up. Uh, the, okay, <laughs> this is this is an interesting one because it's all to do with the borders of the stands. So how come they are all carved in a haphazard way? Uh, like, you know, they don't have straightish borders because after all, of course, you know, the territories were divided. Mm -hmm. How come they are all in a haphazard kind of a way? Any um, idea? One was, I think we heard that it was all along the rivers which kind of formed the borders of the countries. Uh, yes, uh, for for example, uh, in some in some places, I, I mean, with the sun stands, uh, we have a border um, along the uh, mountains, uh, with the sun stands uh, along the, uh, you know, uh, rivers. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, just also through natural borders. Uh, uh, for example, if you if you wanted to go to, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if you wanted to go to Kazakhstan, so we have uh, eight uh, eight different checkpoints. Mm. Right. Uh, to, to, to reach the territory from uh, Kyrgyzstan to Kazakhstan. Uh, with, for example, with Uzbekistan, we have uh, uh, two checkpoints, uh, custom checkpoints. Uh, the same with the other countries. With the China, uh, also, it's a Torgar Pass and um, Irkishtan. Uh, yeah, I think it's the mountain ranges, it's the rivers, it's uh, the nomadic tribes, because all the stands seem to have their own, including, like, you know, towards China and all. So based on all that to kind of <laughs> get them all in together. Um, typically, what is uh, the cost for a day for a traveler traveling independently? Um, roughly, how much do you think for a standard accommodation and meals? Uh, what are they likely to spend? Uh, so uh, if in, in the dollars or in uh, in the dollars, right? Dollars, yes. Oh, okay. Um, uh, you know, it actually depends in which part of the country you are. Uh, for example, in the Bishkek or in Osh, it might be a little bit, um, you know, more expensive than in the villages. Uh, mm -hmm. But okay, uh, from uh, from forty to fifty dollars per day. I mean. Yeah, it's a food and overnight and three three times food overnight. So from forty to fifty dollars, but uh, as I mentioned before, it depends where you are. Absolutely, absolutely. I think yeah, that that. But roughly, yeah, that that just gives an idea of how it might be. Then on top of that, the travel or any entrance fees. So it varies, isn't it? Um, is there any like you know kind of um, 
other wildlife than generally the horses or the, um, the cattle and all you see there, any other wildlife or birds for wildlife enthusiasts? Mm, you know, uh, in this case, if people want to stay uh, out of the towns or cities, it's possible to do that, uh, for example, as I mentioned before, not only around Istuku Lake, but everywhere in the Kyrgyzstan, we have a lot of gorges. So plenty of time just to put a tent and live there. <laughs> But uh, because most of the country located on the altitude of 3,000 meters, it's better to do that. And it's a cold in the winter and in autumn and in spring. It's better to do that during uh, summer months. Uh, also, uh, you, it's possible to do that uh, on the Somku Lake. So the whole three months, people can stay here in the yard of the uh, nomads. Uh, <laughs> but do you see any birds and all around there? And yes, 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 yes. Uh, 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 for example, on the uh, on the Sonku Lake, we have a big, uh, uh, you know, a big number of different um, big number of different kind of birds, and you, um, uh, so uh, you know, and the scientists from the different countries. Uh, uh, they come uh, mostly from um, uh, Japan. Yes, mostly from Japan. They come to Sanku Lake purposely uh, to look after the life of, uh, of of the birds. Okay, migratory ones also, or are they the? the... Uh, uh, you know, uh, most of the birds uh, they just you know use in Kyrgyzstan uh, for several months and then they go further to other countries. But during July and August, you have a chance to uh, look after their life. Yeah. And usually, uh, bird watchers, I mean scientists or just lovers, uh, they uh, they prefer to look after the birds uh, around the Songkhul Lake. Brilliant. Thank you. And are there any national parks also in the country? National parks. Uh, a lot of national parks. Uh, so just uh, for the first one you can find is 30 kilometers from Bishkek. It's the Alarcha National Park. Oh. Uh, uh, also, I mean, in um, so in this video, uh, I mentioned about Chongqing. It's also a national park. E everywhere. <laughs> we have a lot of national parks. So, so, so uh, territory of around Sonkoli, it's also a national park. Uh, so, uh, a lot of uh, some parks around this Siku Lake, so uh, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Kyr we can say that Kyrgyzstan is a national park. <laughs> it, it, yeah, exactly. It has everything and vast spaces and, you know, little population and everything and all that wildlife there. So, uh, I mean, all these, like, you know, uh, the cattle or the people, the shepherds and others. Um, well, I think that's all the questions. So let's move on to the next slide. And thank you so much, uh, Lisa, for answering our questions. Uh, thank uh, you, Sunita. And thank you for everybody being with us. Thank you. <laughs> it was really fascinating. So our next event is as shown here. We will mm -hmm. stay in the region and visit another incredible Silk Road country, Iran. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for a beautiful introduction to Kyrgyzstan. And thank you all once again for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you in three weeks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.